All right, we're going to solve this algebraically. Now, to get rid of this square root, you need to square both sides. So what I'm going to do is I am, just what I just said, going to square both sides. So the left side, when I square it, though, I have to do that box foil thing, because when I say squared, I have two of them. And on the right side, I get x plus 1. Now, to solve this, I have to simplify the left side before I go any farther. And to simplify the left side, I'm going to use FOIL, or the box, whatever you want, but I'm using FOIL. And when I multiply that out, I get x squared minus 5x minus 5x plus 25. And I still have the x plus 1 over here. All right, now, the left side is not completely simplified. So could I also combine these and get x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals x plus 1? All right, since I have a quadratic, my next step is to set it equal to 0. So to get this equal to 0, I always want the x squared positive. So for this one, the x squared is already positive, so I don't want to move the x squared. I want to move everything else over to the x squared. So I'm going to get this over. And I'm going to minus this one over. I'm going to do both at once. So these both disappear. And what I now have is x squared minus 11x plus 24 equaling 0. So because I had an x squared again, I wanted to get all the pieces to one side with an x squared being positive. Because now we're going to factor this. Here's that big x thing. So we're going to make that big x. 24 is on top and negative 11 is on bottom. 24, negative 11. All righty. The top, we're looking for things that multiply to get 24, and we're adding to get negative 11. So we got to think about possibilities. And as we think about this, hmm, what numbers multiply to get 24 and add to get negative 11? And hopefully you think and understand this is negative 8 and negative 3. Hopefully you can see those work. Negative 8 times negative 3 is positive 24, and negative 8 plus negative 3 is negative 11. So what that means is I now have the factored form x minus 8 times x minus 3 equaling 0. And then I want to find the zeros for this. So, well, what makes the first piece 0, and what makes the second piece 0? Because that's what we're trying to find out. It's, it's called the zero product property. If I find something to make this 0, <laughs> Won't that make the product 0? If I assign something to make this 0, won't that make the product of the 2 be 0? So let's see what these are. Now, a lot of you could simply just, you don't have to add 8 over it, you see it. Many of you can tell it's 8 without moving it. And many of you can see, oh, that's just 3. So again, many of you can look right here and say 8. See right here and put 3. You can skip this step. Just understand those are my answers. But here's the problem. Didn't we have a square root involved? And when we have a square root, don't we have to check for extraneous? So here we go. Let's do our check, because that is so easy to forget to do. So we are going to check this right here. So when we check it, what we have here is we're plugging in 8. Let's do 8. 8 minus 5 equals the square root of 8 plus 1. Let's see if that works. Let's see. That'd be 3 equals the square root of 9. And that looks good. So I'm going to come over here and say 8 is golden. It's good. All right. Let's check the other one. Check 3. So we have 3 minus 5 is equal to the square root of 3 plus 1. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. That equals the square root of 4. Um, that doesn't make any sense. Negative 2 does not equal 2. So what that means is this is not a solution. We could say that 3 is extraneous, or an extraneous solution. Um, but the only solution we have is 8. 8 is the only one that works. 3 is an extraneous solution, so we only have one answer. If we were to graph this function and this function, they'd only cross when x is 8. They would not cross 